Hey everybody, it's 40 degrees in my shop. I need to clean my chimney and get fires going in here because we're at that time of the year. It's been real cold out. Other thing, I crushed my finger the other day pretty good. Uh, it happens. Be careful, guys. I'm very careful in my personal life and my professional life, but uh, injuries can occur. So just be careful, guys. I'm not harping out yet, but so I'm kind of taking her easy. Um, still working on the home light. I want to talk about porting with you guys right now. I've had a lot of good emails. Keep them coming, guys. If I can answer your questions, I will. Porting home lights. There's a lot of you guys out there that are saying, hey, I got a home light. I want to port it. I've never ported a saw. Um, I want to port my home light. I think that's great. But I think we need to do a video about porting one of these and, and what that entails. Okay. These stock run about 10,000 RPM. That's not very fast, is it, guys? They pull hard, though. So, when I'm porting one of these, I have to figure out how can I speed it up. Now, normally, if you were going to speed up a piston-ported saw, you could increase the compression a little bit. So, there's your base gasket delete. Raise the exhaust roof, which is the top of the exhaust. Somebody was asking me, how does that all work? I, I don't understand. Okay, so when your exhaust or when your when your spark plug fires, it pushes down. It explodes the gas or creates a flame front. Okay? We're gonna say explosion because it's it's a term everybody understands. It explodes, it pushes down on the piston. The longer it pushes down on the piston, the longer your power stroke is, okay? That's what we call a power stroke. The sooner you open the exhaust roof, the shorter the power stroke is, the less torque you are making, okay? When you start timing saws, the ones that make huge torque but aren't that fast, they usually have a very low exhaust roof which means their power stroke is longer. Now, what does that do? It gives you more torque, but you have less RPM, okay? The easiest way to create RPM in a saw is to raise the exhaust roof. But with RPM comes heat, right? You might, nar you might narrow your power curve, your power band, as most people would, re would refer to it, you might lower your power band. Your power band in a stock saw might be here, but it might be down at this RPM. When you port it, you move it higher. Now the key when you port a saw, you want to keep it as large as possible for a work saw. For a cookie cutter or a race saw or a hot saw, that power band might be here. But now you put a pipe on it and you do other go fast moves to keep that piston in moving in the power band and then the saw does not slow down in the cut if you over exhaust roof your saw it will sound stupid okay but it's not going to have torque generally like you're you're expecting okay it'll be a harder saw to live with it'll sound nasty it'll move a lot of air and it will it could spin 16,000 17,000 rpm but when you go to use that saw in real world conditions, you're probably not going to be happy with it. So somebody emailed me and said, how do you know where to put the exhaust roof? That is experience guys. Um, I've made mistakes with exhaust roofs and I ended up with a wickedly fast saw that when I went to go use it in the field, I wasn't happy with it. So if, if you're porting, don't move the exhaust roof too high because you're not going to be happy. Try two degrees, okay? Put two degrees on the intake side. You can either cut the bottom of the piston skirt on the intake side, or you can grind the floor of the intake on the cylinder. Whatever you're comfortable with. Try that. Now put the saw back together and run it. 
put a tack on its stock, put a tack on it after, you will see the RPM move up. You will also see the power curve move farther up, which means, what does that mean in real world times, real world conditions? You will have a saw that cuts faster, okay, and makes more power higher up in the rev range, which means it'll just feel nastier. Now, where do the transfers come into that? When you do all this, you want to pull more air and more fuel into the combustion chamber. Now, the way you do that, <coughs> excuse me, the way you do that is to taper the transfers. Open them up. You want them to push more air through. Now, how much do you open them? How wide? That, again, trial and error. You guys are, have to go in there and do experimentation. That's what this is, guys. This home light is an experiment. Okay? So, I'm still trying to find the exhaust roof height that I like. You might not like my ex exhaust roof height in this saw. So, that's why I'm not giving out the timing numbers because I want to know for certain before I lead you guys down this path that my numbers are good. Or you're not going to be very happy. And I don't want emails saying I used your numbers and I blew my saw up. Um, I, don't, I, I don't want that. Okay? So, we're still playing with this. Now, when you pour the reed saw, you have to remember... Your reeds open and close, right? You are changing the load on these reeds. Uh, a ported saw is probably going to pull these reeds harder, which means it might overfuel or it might underfuel. It might be hard to start. If these reeds don't seal properly, which they usually don't in a 40 year old chainsaw, you're going to have hard starting. It's going to exacerbate a problem that you already had. That's why I'm getting these running before I port them on a typical piston ported saw I'll just grab that thing rip it down port it and put it back together but on these I gotta make sure the reeds are in good shape if the leads are re uh, leads <laughs> if the reeds are leaking you're gonna have a hard starting saw it's gonna the tune is gonna wander in it you're gonna have a hard time getting it to settle down so be aware of that if you're gonna port one of these uh, you really got to understand how the reads factor into your timing numbers and uh, and so on and so forth. These also have four reads. So these tend to overfuel because there's four small reads in there. So you're probably going to have to make a custom set of reads for one of these, which I'm still working on. I'm literally doing that right now, figuring out my dimensions and my thickness. And, and, and that kind of thing. It takes time. It'll take me longer to set reeds up for this than it's going to, to port it. So, I might have to change the timing numbers to get the reeds to react the way I want. So, that is what's going on in my world right now. And I just, I don't want to lead you guys astray. Lastly, these carburetors in these saws. You see that governor? That's a governor. There's a little ball valve under there, check valve with a spring behind it. That check valve opens and dumps raw fuel in at a certain RPM. It's, it's, I'm not sure exactly what's going on in there, but I think it's a vacuum thing. When you hit a high enough RPM, it pulls enough vacuum that it opens that valve. So these things run too rich, uh, ported. They run too rich stock too, but ported, it makes it worse. So... You're going to have to delete that check valve, which doesn't always work. Uh, you got to seal it off with something. If that doesn't work, which I'm 50-50 on whether it works or not, you are going to have to build a custom carburetor. Okay? So make sure you have an idea for a carb swap that will work on this saw before you port it. Because if you don't have the right carb, you're dead in the water. Right now, as this saw is... It's too rich at idle. It's spitting fuel out of the carb. So the reeds are hanging open. It's hard to start. And it overfuels tremendously at a high RPM. So right there, it's like we got all these other things going on. So 
What am I doing right now? I'm building a custom carburetor for this saw. It's going to be a one-off and this saw will have this custom carb. How do you do that? Well, you got to find a carb that will mount up. Just giving this reed block here. You see that hole there? That is the impulse hole. You need a carb that's going to bolt up and the impulse hole will line up with your reed block. Now, it's probably going to be a Tillotson carb. I thought of putting a wall bro on here, but I'm having problems finding one that I can switch the shafts over because we have a throttle linkage, not a throttle cable. And the choke being where it is, um, I need to be able to flip the shafts so that I have choke and proper throttle. Now, even if I did do that, most of these Walboro carbs I'm looking at, they impulse through the top cover, which is fine. You can drill an impulse line into your crankcase or your transfers. But the problem is with this saw, I can't physically find anywhere to fit an impulse line. She's too tight. So normally you drill an impulse line, you JB weld it in, make sure it's sealed, and you'd run a hose to the carb. I can't do that on this saw. There's just not enough room. So I'm stuck trying to figure out a Tillotson carb that will work in this saw. So that's all I want to say today, guys. Uh, I wanted to, I'm getting a lot of emails on the same question. So timing numbers, I don't know yet. We'll see. I will share them when the time is right. Um, if you're going to port one of these, you're, you're in for a treat. They, they, they do run crazy ported, but it's a lot of work. Um, if you're just starting porting, I wouldn't recommend this being, I know it's a cheap saw and you can find them. A lot of you guys have them. I don't recommend this as your first ported saw because it's very, very involved. And I think a new porter might get frustrated. Uh, I'm glad I didn't port one of these for my first saw. So, um, piston ported, I think, is the way to go if you're just learning because it's easier. There's three things to worry about. Four things, really. Compression, exhaust timing, transfer timing, intake timing. That's it. You usually don't need a different carb on a piston ported saw or a bigger carb. Some saws will run good with a bigger carb, but generally you don't need to swap a carb on a piston ported saw. On these, I think the only way to make them run good is a carb swap. So... Right there, that makes it very involved, and you can spend a bunch of money buying carburetors that aren't going to work. So, could get expensive. If you want to have adder, I say have adder, but I just, I didn't want any, I feel like maybe I'm leading some of you astray. Um, this is just good old-fashioned fun in the saw lab. Um, for me, you know, this is good old-fashioned fun, but remember, you know, guys, I have piles of carburetors laying here and parts and bins of parts that I can look through and go, oh, what's this? Oh, that might work. You know, I'm not buying parts and waiting for them every time I need a part. Uh, I'm using what I got. I'm building a Psycho Billy Cadillac, one piece at a time. So, that's what's going on in my world. Anyhow, I just wanted to talk about these and what's going on with them and kind of help some of you guys out. Uh, I had a couple of good questions this week from a couple of fellows about exhaust timing. Remember, it's, it's super simple. It's a syringe, right? When the piston goes up, the minute it, the minute it covers the exhaust port, okay, if the exhaust port is here, the minute it covers the exhaust port with the top ring, you're making compression. Okay, compression makes more power in a lot of cases, right? But there is a fine line between compression, heat, the bottom end lasting, and all that kind of stuff. So let's just talk about it in basic terms. You're building compression, okay? The lower the exhaust roof is, the more compression you'll have because you're compressing more air, right? Does that make sense? Now, the lower your exhaust roof is, the slower your RPM is. So you're going to have physically a slower cutting saw. Okay. So what you have to learn is how high can you raise the exhaust port to not lose a ton of compression, gain enough RPM, but still make adequate torque. Okay. 
adequate torque that you have a nasty saw everywhere. You want this thing to lay on its side and, and fall big trees and have enough power to go zing through the wood. You don't want it stalling all the time. Now, sometimes stalling is related to chains, but I'm not a filing expert. Um, there's a lot of other places. You can go to Buckins Channel or to the Iron Horses Channel. Those guys know filing. Go there. I only talk about things I feel I'm qualified to look at so or to talk about. So, okay, so you're, somebody was asking exhaust roof. Remember, the higher the roof, the lower your compression is going to be. Unless you put a pop-up on the piston, that's a whole other ball of wax. But with a stock piston, the higher your roof is, the less cylinder you're compressing. Okay, think of it that way. The volume of air increases as the roof is lower and decreases as the roof is higher. If your exhaust roof is too high, you make less compression and you also vent your power stroke. When that blows up, you're pushing down on the piston, right? Push on it with your finger and think about it. You're pushing down on the piston. That's what creates your power stroke. Well, the sooner you crack the exhaust roof, if you crack it up here, it's only coming down this far. If you crack it down here, it's coming down that far. That's how you make torque. Now, the fine line when you're porting, you want to raise the RPM of the saw, which will make it faster if you can keep your torque curve big enough, okay? Your stock saw, the torque curve's this, this big, and it's down here. When you port, you're moving it higher up in the RPM, but you might be narrowing it a bit. Now, how do we know how high to put the exhaust? It's an educated guess, and the only way to learn that is to port saws. Don't raise your exhaust roof too high. couple degrees, guys. Try that. Put the saw back together and run it. If you're not happy with it, take it apart. Maybe add another degree or, or two degrees maximum. Once you start adding four degrees to an exhaust, you're often, you're not going to be happy. Your power curve is going to be here, way up high. And when you're cutting with the saw and you move down to this RPM range, it falls flat on its butt and it, it, you're not going to be happy with it. Intake duration is the same. Don't over intake your saws because you will over fuel the saw and the saw will get lazy. It could spit back through the carb and you're just not going to be happy. So that's what I know right now. We can talk about transfers another day. Transfers are you got to move more air and the way you move more air is to reshape your transfers. So you really have to think in your mind what the air is doing. Okay, there's my whole night talk of the week. We are building a custom carb. I'm going to probably do that right now. Uh, or maybe try. I can't do much with this finger. It's pretty pretty mangled on the end. So, Anyhow, guys, when I get a custom carb built, I will show you. Anyhow, thanks for coming here, guys. Thanks for all the questions and comments. I love doing this channel. The more I do it, the more fun it is. So, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy.